Good morning and welcome back to Church at Home with Rachel for this Wednesday, the 17th of November. I have been off the last week and a half, so it's good to see you again. I hope you've been having a good time and enjoying this incredible fall, early winter weather and um, getting ready for everything that comes next. It's today marks, um, yesterday actually marked an anniversary. Yesterday was the one year anniversary of when we started Church at Home because on the 15th of November, 16th of November of 2020, we went into lockdown in the church for, we thought it would be two weeks. It was a two week circuit breaker to see if we could, um, the, if, you know, the province and the churches could have sort of get things under control with what I believe at the time was the, yeah, sorry, oh. I believe it was at the time the third or second wave. I can't remember. There's been so many, so many things have happened. But we went into we went into lockdown, and I knew that we were going to have to take our services online for at least a couple of Sundays, um, at least one anyway. And Rob and I did our level best to to tape uh, the Sunday service for the the twenty second of November of twenty twenty on my iPhone, and it worked, sort of, um, but not as well as it could have. And from then we went on this journey of buying equipment and figuring out how to tape services. And then Rob learned to edit and add people in and music and videos. And we we got pretty good at it. I wouldn't say we're awesome, but we did a pretty good job right through until the middle of June. We did take a break. We were open on Easter Day, but then we had to close again because um, things just didn't go well in the province. So this whole Church at Home started because I wanted to just simply practice being on camera um, for Sunday worship, but also to sort of stay connected with the congregations um, as we were on lockdown, as I wouldn't be seeing them on Sundays. And it's sort of taken on a life of its own. We've had our ups and downs. We've had times when we've had lots of viewers and times when we've had very few. But as long as there's one or two people watching, it makes it seems to me that it's worthwhile to do this because it means that we have an opportunity to connect. So today, I'd just like to ask you for your feedback. Are there topics you would like me to talk about? Um, do you think I should continue doing this on a daily basis when we're not in lockdown? Um, if we were to go back into lockdown, absolutely, we would continue. Uh, but just thinking, you know, I enjoy doing this, and I think it's become a part of my ministry. But if, if it's not needed, then we don't need to do it. But I think probably there's a few people who appreciate having it. So just just let me know if and also if there's topics you you know I've talked about prayer, I've talked about a little bit about politics, talked about um, being involved in the life of the church and what it means to worship and things like that. But really do ask for your considered opinions about things you'd like me to talk about because um, sometimes the Holy Spirit moves easily in giving me ideas. And sometimes it's a, a bit more like pulling teeth, trying to figure out what I should talk about today. Um, so please give me some feedback. Let me know if there's some ideas. Um, if you'd like to email me, my email is rev.rachelparker at gmail.com. So rev Rachel Parker at gmail.com and Rachel spelt A-E-L. Um, you can also comment on the YouTube or you can um, comment on Facebook, whatever you're comfortable with. If it's something personal or something you don't want other people to see, please feel free to email me or to direct message me on Messenger through Facebook. I just, though, today I just wanted to talk about the anniversary and talk about sort of connecting with you and seeing how you are doing with this past year how are you how are you getting through this fourth wave this wave seems to be taking an awfully long time and hopefully we are now in a position where you will be able to see family and friends for christmas and get together we're hoping to have um our well be planning on having our edgerton saint mary's christmas eve service at five o'clock at the Egg Hall in Edgerton and having it more as a community Christmas service um, and finishing up when in time for the Parade of Lights or whatever it is that the Fire Hall does um, at six o'clock on Christmas Eve. Our idea is to invite the United Church members of the community and also anyone who would like to come to join us for a Christmas Eucharist. We 
really simple, straightforward, nothing too fancy. Uh, we won't be doing candlelight because we're not in our own church and I don't know about the rules around the egg hall and lit, lit flames and things like that. But we will be able to celebrate Christmas together. And then on Christmas Day, we'll have a Eucharist in the church at St. Mary's in Edgerton. And at St. Thomas, we'll be having our Christmas Eve service, a candlelight service at 9 o'clock p.m. on Christmas Eve. So it may seem odd, but the time is coming. And we need, to, especially in this day and age, we need to make preparations. We need to think about what we're going to do for then. But we also, I think, need to think about where we're going. So today I'm thinking about where we've been in the past year. We've been on lockdown and then we've reopened. We have seen a few new people coming into church and we've seen a lot of people who used to be members of the congregation who aren't able or aren't, um, for various reasons, um, or choosing to come back to church yet. Uh, I know it's hard when we don't have coffee hour, and we have to wear masks and things like that. Um, but we're sort of regrouping and trying to figure out who are we now as church now that we are mid-COVID, because we are not post-COVID, folks, not yet. Um, and there are arguments that we may never be post-COVID. It will always be here. Our understanding of how to deal with it, though. like They had the, the Spanish flu in the early um, 20th century. They, I think they, I read somewhere that it really did actually last about three years. And we know eventually people stopped wearing masks and people went out and did things as per their usual ways and things got even more social because we're here and we are mo bemoaning the fact that we can't do those things. So we weren't locked down for a hundred years. Now we just have to figure out how do we progress through this time and how do we figure out where we, who we should be and how we should, inter should interact after the, the, the biggest fear of COVID has ended. And as we continue forward as w what life might look like in the future. So this past year, we've had lockdowns, we've had reopenings, we have had discoveries about what we do and don't want to, to, to think about church and what the role that church has in our lives. For, for many people, this has been a year, of, uh, a year and a half or to almost two years of really searching spiritually and discovering how important God is to you or how important God isn't to you in your lives. But it's also been a time of discovering what the role of the church has been in the past for you and what it is now and maybe even thinking about what it might be in the future. So as I as I consider this past year, I really do have to wonder what will the church look like in the next six months, the next year or two years. But you see, I don't know what the church looked like here in Wainwright and Edgerton in the Wee Parish before the, before the pandemic because I moved in right in the middle of it and was only here for two months before we had to lock down again. So this is all brand new territory for me. Um, in addition to the whole pandemic theme being brand new territory, I have no idea what the wee parish will look like when we are, when we are safe to come back without masks and have coffee hours and potluck lunches and, you know, things like that. What I do know is that the church itself has not changed and never will change. We are still the repository of the good news of Jesus Christ. We are still a place where people can come to worship and to pray, to be prayed over, to be prayed for, where we can receive reconciliation with God and with one another, where we receive absolution for our sins, where we can come and confess, a place where we can come and rejoice. That is what the church has been and what the church will continue to be. We have to figure out how we work that around that. But the essence of what church is hasn't changed. And so as we move into the second year of Church at Home with Rachel, I encourage you to please think in terms of how your spiritual life can be best enhanced and developed both through the virtual things like this, but also through reaching out to communities like church and figuring out where do we go from here, because we includes you. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I will see you again tomorrow for Thursday's Church at Home with Rachel. God bless you and thank you for accompanying me in this past year.